Hey, what's up, guys? It is Celeb back again for another video this time around. We're here to talk about our hands-on and hands-off impressions with Capcom during Summer Games Fest. So we were able to check out... We checked out three games of the four that they had um, available. We checked out um, the uh, Path of the Goddess. We checked out Monster Hunter or Monster Hunter Wilds and also checked out Street Fighter 6 with M. Bison. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk briefly about Monster Hunter Wilds. So in Monster Hunter Wilds, players join the ranks of a special research commission team investigating the Forbidden Lands. Fully voiced for the first time in Monster Hunter in the Monster Hunter series, the hunters venture into an unknown into the unknown with their companions, including a guild appointed handler, Alma, their Palico partner and a mysterious child. Wild. Monster Hunter Wilds features multi-dimensional uh, multi biomes that can transform in unexpected ways. First locale to be unveiled uh, was the way, uh, Windward Plains. Uh, Windward Plains, a vast region encompassing harsh deserts, twisted rock formations, and swaying grasslands abound with life. So, um, the Doshigami is the main uh, one that they chased after, and we got to see a lot of gameplay of your hunter ch uh, chasing them down and, uh, you know, uh, stopping this elite Doshigami. Uh, so, it was like a, um, it was like a, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I've been really sick these last few days. It was like a type of m merger between like a bear monkey I don't know really how else to explain it, but it was uh, huge. It was very gigantic, and there was um, there was a there were some of the regular Doshigami, and then there was also the elite Doshigami, which uh, was the one that put up the most fight. But the crazy thing is, like while they were showcasing this gameplay, I was honestly just like awestruck. Like the gameplay, the graphics, uh, the overall just presentation that Wilds features. Uh, in this uh, video game engine was like utterly shocking. Um, not only was it like really cool, of course, to see um, the, all the different types of animals and, um, you know, beasts that you get to fight against, but these these maps are huge and um, are have all different types of animals that you get to chase down depending on the biomes. And also it has like a very crazy dynamic weather system that can completely change uh, the scale of the the location while you're in there. So if like there's a giant sandstorm that comes in, it'll actually really like it'll change the the location and make it more dangerous. Um, it'll change a lot of the environmental aspects of the of the um, of the location as well. Um, but one thing too that I noticed, I know this is like really small detail stuff, but like. It literally comes down to even the point of like how amazing the sand looked as you were taking on these Doshigami. Like there was times that you're trying to stop him um, and, you know, he's going down into this giant hole that's that some of the smaller Doshigami got pulled down into by a monster that was under the sands. And like as he's trying to work himself back up, you actually see the sand being manipulated by his paws. It was actually changing like on screen. It was really honestly shocking to me. Um, I like these little small details and they're things that I really focus on whenever I'm checking out these games at these events um, or just, you know, gameplay trailers in general. Um, but there is a ton of stuff in this game. There's 14 uh, weapons that will return uh, with new e uh, new um, weapons as well. A brand new system, a uh, brand new in-game system. Uh, much such as the focus mode, giving hunters more precision controls over their aiming, guarding, and attacks. There also uh, there's also a new thing called the hook slinger. Uh, it offers hunters the abilities uh, to um, uh, uh, hunters additional abilities um, that you can actually use to mount some of these monsters while you're playing the game. Uh, but it was a really, really cool experience. Um, I was honestly really blown away by it. And uh, the fact that it's going to be the first Monster Hunter that is fully voiced over. It's going to be the first Monster Hunter that um, I think is going to be 
um, one of those games that people that did not originally play the Monster Hunter series are going to end up playing because of the crazy style of gameplay, all the new aspects, the biomes, how that you can actually, you know, in this map, feel like you're on different worlds at times. Uh, but I've really enjoyed what we show, uh, what was showcased to us by the development studio. Uh, moving on from there, um, I got to say, uh, Path of the Goddess, uh, uh, it was unbelievable, dude. I mean, that's really the best way of saying it. There, I mean, when they cut down, when, when you cut down to what this game is going to truly be about, it's about art. It's about um, things that we have not seen before um, in, in video games. So, I will say this with uh, Kutsi, uh, Kun... Itsugami, Kunitsugami. I don't know why I have such a horrible time saying that. Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. Um, I was really, really enthralled by this game. So one of the cool things about this is that it is a unique Japanese-inspired um, game. So the visuals are really, really captivating. Players will play as a protagonist show uh, to make sharp strategic decisions and useful skill dancing sword actions while working with rescued villagers and the, ma uh, the, the maiden Yoshiro to overcome the challenges ahead. So you're basically taking on demonic forces in this world to bring the bring clear, clean life back to the lands. Um, and it's a really, really cool concept on a game. One thing that I did actually learn uh, while I was there is that a lot of the art style and visuals in this game were actually handmade and then scanned into the world. So I was, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I was really blown away by that. Um, they they handmade not just the characters, but different levels, um, different art styles, all different types of stuff, and then scanned it into the world to make it even look more of a, have more of a Japanese inspired, like realistic look. And it was really, really um, a breathtaking experience. So as you're playing, it's kind of like an action strategy game. So you actually can save some of these villagers um, by, you know, uh, purging their corruption and then you can turn them to your side making them woodsmen or making them uh you know different type of uh characters that can help you uh as you are playing and as you're trying to clear out all this demonic disgustingness around you so uh it was a really really cool concept I, it's something that i have been constantly thinking about since i played the game I got to sit there and play it for about 30 minutes. I got a 30 minute hands-on session and um, the development studio or the dev team was like, do you want to jump in or do you want to, you want me to kind of lead you along the way? And I was like, ah, just let me learn it by myself. And surprisingly enough, I really picked it up pretty easily. Um, they had actually had stated that some people were having problems with the game because it was one of those strategic experiences. But I'm going to tell you, I picked it up pretty quick. And I know a lot of people really wanted this game to be, um, you know, something else. Um, but, you know, I think that if you are a fan of if you are a fan of Capcom games, you're really going to enjoy this game when it does come out. Uh, there is not um, there. There is not really much else to say about the game outside of it just being a fantastic fantastic visual experience now the game does come out july 19th and if you have xbox game pass you can actually play it on game pass day one um but as i said the visuals were fantastic the gameplay was very very smooth the art style was really cool the fact that they actually like handmade a bunch of the the a bunch of the environmental things and then scanned it into the game to make it look that much better uh, was crazy to me. It was really honestly crazy to me. So, um, but I'm very excited to play this game uh, and to strategize and plan as much as I possibly can whenever it comes out on July 19th. And lastly, we're here to talk about M. Bison. 
So Street Fighter VI uh, has revealed that the one and only M. Bison has returned uh, to the Street Fighter world. Um, really crazy, honestly. Um, I, I don't know exactly what they're what they're hinting at with uh, with the return of M. Bison, um, but I know that during this gameplay um, that I got to sit down and play. There was times that he made certain comments about like how he didn't know who M. Bison was. So I guess his memory has been wiped um, or he's trying to figure out exactly who he is. But it was also announced that Terry, my uh, uh, Terry and my from uh, SNK's fi uh, Fatal Fury series are coming to the game as well. So I think this is a really, really big thing. A lot of fans were very excited. It said last seen in Street Fighter VI, the cheerful Elena hits Street Fighter uh, uh, hits the streets in Street Fighter Final Year Two um, uh, character patch. So Elena's coming back as well. But the main thing is, I played as M Bison, and he is very overpowered. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. He's very, very overpowered, um, and so. The uh, the psycho uh, or psychonetic powers of M. Bison are, of course, back. He's got a new look to him um, as well. And while I was playing, I actually had somebody that was from another outlet that came over and played with me. I played as Akuma, and he played as M. Bison, and the dude completely destroyed me. So uh, I, ha I will say that I was very, very excited uh, to see this character... Um, kind of make his way back into the the world of of uh street fighter and especially with this new look that he has so i don't know the exact date of when m bison and these other characters are coming out i think autumn of 2024 um but it is definitely something you need to check out for yourself um and i do want to give a big shout out of course uh to the amazing team at capcom for giving us this opportunity of checking out these games um, I know I was kind of all over the place. As I said, guys, I've been really, really sick recently. Um, I had, uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but I got a um, some type of infection or crud or something right after I got back, and I'm just now starting to somewhat get over it. I want to give a big shout-out to Capcom uh, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I want to also give a shout-out to Capcom for letting us try out these games, but also accepting an award uh, for uh, the Path of the Goddess. We gave it a, a Best of Summer Games Fest. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Um, I do hope you uh, check out more videos that we have planned. We're going to talk about Hyperlight Breaker. We're going to talk about Hello Kitty Island Adventure. We're also going to talk about Dune Awakening and more. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.